I was uh, a young man when uh, the occupation in 1967 took place, and it was a traumatic experience. And it was it it was the occupation that prompted me to start, to keep a diary, because there were so many confusing uh, things that were happening. I couldn't quite understand and I found it difficult to deal with the changing reality. Every aspect of life is affected by the occupation. So uh, to start with the control of space, uh, you, 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 I think the worst thing is feeling the sense of being a stranger in your own land and feeling that it's no longer, no, not a single part of it is yours that you can take for granted. It's really, uh, we continuously persist in calling it occupation, but it's, it's gone far beyond occupation, it's colonization at its best. The minute you move out, you see checkpoints, you, you're stopped by Israeli soldiers, uh, you, you could be attacked by settlers, rowdy settlers. Uh, you see the more settlements being built despite the claims that there is a settlement freeze when, when such a claim was being made. Uh, you, you, you see the destructive force of huge amounts of mo money that are mobilized uh, to, to dig through and, and destroy the landscape. The landscape that you grew up familiar with and, and, uh, and grew to love. You see it destroyed and you can't do anything about it. So I started keeping a diary as a way of dealing with, with the events around me, trying to understand them better. And it became a, a habit that I've never left. And, uh, and it's one of the important ways in which I still use to understand, to come to grips with, to deal with the emotions, to deal with the thoughts, uh, to make sense of what's happening around me. And this book is selections from the diaries that I kept over the past two years. My book is also about memory and a, a, a book of memories. For example, I'm sitting at the, the barber shop, the same barber shop that I've been going to since I was four. Uh, and of course, it was his father who was at the barber shop. And his father was my father's barber in Jaffa. And, and uh, his uh, barber shop was next to the court, so my father would get his hair cut before going to his uh, court sessions. And then uh, he, uh, along with my father, was forced out of Rama uh, Jaffa and ended up in Ramallah and, and continued to be a barber and was my father's barber and became mine. And uh, now his son is my barber and I'm sitting there at, on the barber chair, which is one of these old traditional chairs. Yes, I did think of leaving, I suppose, but uh, uh, I, from uh, very early on, I realized that one of the most important objectives of the occupation is to empty the land of Palestinians. And in, in face of that, the strategy of Sumud staying put uh, has been uh, a very important. In a sense, I, I yearn for the time when I can leave without my leaving having such a, a big meaning. Uh, but I don't think that time will come in my lifetime. I, I, so I think I'm, I'm going to stick. <laughs> in the two-year period that I write about, I start before the Arab Spring and everything seems uh, on, on standstill. Everything is on hold. Um, Nothing is moving. Everything is in, inter is, in, is in Israel's interest. And then, as always happens, something flares up almost immediately. And uh, there is revolution in, in Egypt. And of course, it starts in Tunis, but more important for us is Egypt. And it was a, a, a great moment for me because uh, it, it, it exploded all the uh, hopes and the... Uh, uh, changed from despair to hope. Uh, of course, we, we've been through enough experiences to know that change takes time. Uh, and uh, still, it was extremely exciting. And the psychological barriers began to fall. Uh, and when the psychological barriers fall, everything is possible. Anything is possible. And, and, and there's no going back when people realize their power. Uh, the, it, 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 change might take time, but it will. Once it starts, 
it starts on the right track. 